Okay, so we have a couple of examples for the if else if statement and just the basic if else. So let's go over number five. So this one we're gonna go back to the quadratic equation. We talked about it before. And for this one, we wanna make sure we don't divide by zero. And we also wanna display the roots if you can, if you don't divide by zero. And we wanna label the roots as either complex or real. All right, for this one, we're just gonna hard code in the coefficient values. And then we'll kind of change up the values as we run it to see the different paths that the, the code takes. So let's say a is equal to zero first. That's obviously gonna ensure a divide by zero. B is gonna equal two. C is gonna equal one. And let's calculate the value that's underneath the square root of the quadratic equation. So let's just call it D. So D is gonna be B squared minus four times A times C. All right, so we got that, put the semicolon. All right, and now in here, let's do nested if statements in this one. All right, so we're gonna say if A is not equal to zero, then we wanna do a, basically a test to see if we have complex or real roots. So the way we do that is to check the value of D. Obviously, if D is negative, you're going to get complex roots. So if D is less than zero, we'll display the little string complex roots. And then we'll go ahead and calculate those. So X1 will be equal to negative B plus square root of D. And then divide that by two times A. All right, so there's that one. Leave the semicolon off so it actually displays the root. And then we'll have X2. That's basically gonna be the same thing. All right, except for we'll change the plus to minus. So let's change this plus sign to a minus. All right, and now we're set there. So that was one option there. The other one is that we have real roots. So in this if statement, we've got two paths. So here we just need if with else. So we're gonna say else display real roots like that. And then you can go ahead and just copy and paste these calculations again. Okay. And then here you need to end because that's the end of that. And then let's do else. So let's walk through this before we go on. So if A is not equal to zero, that means you can actually do the calculations. You wanna come through here and check to see if you have complex or real roots, okay? And assuming that, you're gonna do these calculations. Otherwise, if A is equal to zero, we wanna come down here and display the statement that says A equals zero will result in A divided by zero. Okay, so now we have that. And then we need to end that statement. And notice MATLAB automatically indented all of this stuff for you so you can see where everything is. Okay, and one more thing you could change here just to make your code a little bit more efficient. If you wanted, you could just have these calculations done. Uh, you could do them outside of this if block. So if you wanted, you could put them right here and then you wouldn't have to have them in both of these locations. You would just calculate them once and then MATLAB would display the message. All right, so it's up to you how you want it. All right, so let's run this, see what it looks like. All right, so I ran the section and let's go over here. Actually, let me clear this out. You can actually see it when we run it again. Okay, so now it says A equals zero will result in A divided by zero error. And we knew that was gonna happen because we hard coded in a value of zero. So in this case, this original condition statement was false, okay? Because A is equal to zero. So that means we automatically jump down to here, okay? 
So we're going to skip over all of this stuff and go directly to here. Now let's change this. So let's just put a 2 in here for A. And now let's see what we get. So this time, I put in 2, I run it. Now I get complex roots. Okay, so I get complex roots, and then here are the roots. So I get negative 0.5 for the real term, and then these are complex conjugates. So I get the plus and minus 0.5i for that imaginary term. Okay, so in that one, a was not equal to zero. So it went through here and it did the test. So we have this D calculation. So it calculated D and it found that D was negative. So then it went through and did this set of action statements. All right. So now let's see, let's make, let's make BB9. So let's run it again. And I'm going to put CLC up here so it'll clear out that screen. Oh, the commands went down. So now when we run it, when B is equal to 9, we're going to have real roots. Okay, and that's because what's under this square root is going to be positive. So now you have your two real root values. Okay, so X would be at negative 0.114 and also at negative 4.39. Okay, so in that case, it went through this set of actions okay and it did that because a was not equal to zero so this was true so then it came down here and then did this check d is positive so this statement is false so it's going to jump down to this set of action statements all right so now let's go to number six and number six this is going to be a banking example so we're going to say we have a savings account and the interest rate's going to vary on the balance amount. Okay. So if you have a balance less than 5,000, you get an interest rate of 9%. If your balance is in between 5,000 and 10,000, it's 12%. Greater than 10,000 is 15%. Okay. And I know these interest rates, this is like wishful thinking here, but they seem like good values in here for this problem. Okay, so let's go through here. We've got three different paths we're going to have, right? So we have three different choices. So we're going to use the else if uh, structure in this one. Okay, so let's generate a random balance. So I'm just going to say the balance is going to be 15,000 times rand. And remember, rand gives you a value that's between 0 and 1. All right, and let's leave the semicolon off so we can actually see the balance. And now let's get into our if statements. So if balance is less than 5,000, we want to put the rate in at 9%. So that's 0 0.09. Okay, and let's leave the semicolon off so it'll show us what rate we have. And once we find the rate, we're going to calculate the new balance after a year. That's what we're trying to do here. And then let's do else if because we have more than two possibilities. So we're going to have else if balance less than 10,000. Then we can say the rate is equal to 0.12. Okay, and looking up here, you might think, well, no, we need to have the and symbol in here. We might, we need to say if the balance is greater than 5,000 and if it's less than 5,000. Okay, but we don't need to do that because MATLAB's already going to check to see if it's, you know, less than 5,000, right? So if it misses this mark, if this is false, then obviously balance is greater than 5,000. So this balance less than 5,000 will automatically check to see if it's in between 5 and 10,000, right? So that's why I don't have, like, two condition statements here. Right, and then last one, since this is the last one, we'll just have else. We can just put rate equals the 0.15. Okay, and then end. So we have our three different paths we could choose. Okay, so if our balance is less than 5,000, we get 9%. If it's less than 10,000, 
but greater than 5,000, because we already checked this here to see if it was less than five, then the rate will be 12%. Otherwise, we're gonna have 15%. Okay, so this else part here, this is what you get if nothing else above that was found to be true.